Hi, I'm Perry, and I'm the Adult Outreach Librarian at the Jessamine County Public Library. We're learning more about how mental and physical health are related. The Jessamine County Health Department has a community-wide program called the Mental Health Work Group. With me today from the Health Department is Bruce Crouch, who is also one of the founding members of the Mental Health Work Group. Hi, Bruce. Would you tell us about your work at the Health Department? Sure, Perry. Thanks for having me today. I'm actually the Harm Reduction and Safety Manager uh, as my current role at the uh, Health Department. Uh, initially started out as the um, uh, community coordinator, um, healthy, healthy and Safe Community Coalition Coordinator, actually, is the full title. Um, and that was comprised uh, that came out of our uh, community health assessment. So, uh, and I, my task was to pull the uh, everything together, I guess, as community uh, members and partners and pull partners together to get involved with uh, things that we had going. Uh, so I kind of switched to those two different roles. Uh, but right now, like I said, I'm the uh, harm reduction safety manager. Uh, a lot to do with COVID right now, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> and then the other side on the harm reduction side, uh, we have our uh, stationary uh, uh, syringe exchange program. And they also have a uh, mobile harm reduction unit. Uh, which actually offers everything that the health department offers. If somebody come into our clinic uh, that we can take out, we do uh, hepatitis testing, HIV testing. Uh, we do the syringe exchange. We have education. We have resources that we give out um, and those. Uh, uh, so we are able to take that, our programs, I guess, out into the community with our mobile unit. Uh, and and it, it lets us, it lets us connect with a lot more people, uh, people that wouldn't normally just come into uh, into town or they're homeless. They don't have a, a vehicle, um, just different reasons. What, could you tell us a little bit about the mental health work group? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> my role with the mental health work group, you know, initially that work group um, was comprised out of our community health assessment, uh, which was done back in 2016. Uh, and then 2017, all of those calculations and everything were put together and uh, four main health issues uh, were kind of at the top of the list. One of those is being mental health, the other is substance abuse, the other is safety, and the other is chronic disease. So substance abuse was, was one that we had a lot and we have a lot of community members that are involved with that. Uh, but, you know, what we found was is, you know, with substance abuse comes mental health issues as well. Uh, and, you know, we found that, uh, you know, like our adverse childhood experiences, how that affects mental health and those things. And, um, but, you know, going back to the, the uh, mental health work group. So that group, you know, it was formed with a goal to inform and educate and empower people about mental health and the issues there. Uh, and like I said, you know, ACEs is being one of those, you know, with our kids. Uh, we really think, you know, starting to focus with our kids' mental state, and especially now with COVID and how how that has affected our children, you know, with being isolated at home and doing the virtual learning, you know, some kids, it's it's really affecting, and, we, you know, we need to concentrate on that. Yeah, I, I'm involved um, with the work group on behalf of the library. Um, what other community par partnerships are involved with the work group? Um, you know, everything, our mental health providers, New Vista, uh, is, is a big partnership. Uh, the school district, uh, we have several members from different uh, areas in the school district uh, that participate and are active with the, the work group. Uh, the police department, uh, we have them. We have uh, the sheriff's offices involved. Um, Bluegrass Community Action, uh, Homeless Coalition. Uh, we have faith-based organizations like uh, Grace to Glory. Uh, that we have involved. We, we have some other faith space. They, they kind of put input, you know, with us. Uh, YMCA uh, is also, of course, you know, they're big in, you know, the YMCA is about our youth uh, for us in Jessamine County. Um, uh, the detention center, the detention center plays a big part. You know, a lot of people think that those guys are just there to, to house inmates and that, and, and that's not, you know, they're, they are open to education. They're open to, uh, to inform, you know, and to, you know, slow down recidivism and, and those things. And what are those gaps that we can feel? 
Uh, so their input and what they're seeing is com people coming and going and, and those individuals is key. Um, but, you know, there's there's others uh, that are out there uh, and I'm, I know I'm forgetting some of those, but those are, are some of the main ones that we have. Okay, so what are some of the work groups initiatives in the community? Well, so, you know, we just, uh, for the month of December, uh, our biggest one was uh, we did, uh, you know, thinking of our kids. Uh, and that was, uh, we had the yard signs that we come up with uh, that we had made uh, for light up adjustment with hope. So if you go back, you know, we had the other, the be kind month that we to help community members like that was, that's a school, you know, thing for the anti-bullying, you know, and um, the, the light up adjustment with hope, the theory or the, the principle behind that is, is, you know, hey, there's hope, there's, there's always something there that, you know, to brighten or lighten everything up. And, you know, you know, as you're driving down the street, and you see one of these yard signs and, and uh, somebody's yard, you know, it, hopefully it'll make you smile it'll make you think hey you know that's that's somebody that cares that we care about our community uh, and that's kind of what our driving you know force or our driving ideas I guess behind that that principle was and um, we we actually uh, were able to purchase those signs uh, from the Kentucky Department of uh, public health with a grant with uh, maternal child health. Uh, so we proposed it to them and they, um, they actually gave us the funding to do that. So it actually didn't cost any of our community members anything to actually even participate in that program. So we were excited about that. Um, you know, some other initiatives we had, I guess uh, another big one is our mental health first aid training. We offered that out to the community. Uh, we did one back last year and we really saw, I, I actually participated in that first one. And I felt like, you know, hey, this is something that if we can actually get a train the trainer, uh, that would be great. So we, we were able to actually uh, jump in with uh, Kentucky Department of Public Health and uh, Behavioral Health. And we've got now members of our school district who are trained in teaching that mental health first aid. And, um, and so we, we went and had just a second course. And what that course really is, if you think about CPR and how CPR is, uh, if, if you are at a restaurant and somebody collapses and you're certified in CPR, then you can help that person sustain life until professionals get there. And if you take that same kind of rule, a rule of thumb, I guess, or, or how it is, uh, with mental health first aid, if you take that course, it helps you identify somebody that is having, and we won't say just suicidal thoughts, but some issues with mental health. Uh, and it may be depression, just depression, not suicide, but just depression. But it helps that person help look and see irregularities, I guess, and say, uh, you know, let's communicate and open that line of communication up and then help guide that person to professional who can actually help and treat them for depression or suicidal thoughts or those things. So taking that same kind of, it helps you keep them alive till you can get the professionals there. Um, sources of strength. That's another huge one. We were the first district school district uh, in the state. It is an, actually an anti-suicide program is what it initially was designed for and it is it is so much more than that it is anti-bullying anti-drugs uh just there, there's a whole wheel of of things that that is covered with that but the program itself it's not adult taught uh you have adult leaders in it i, I work with uh, west Jefferson middle school but you actually have the peers, the kids are actually teaching other kids the good, you know, those, those sources, what is their strengths and how they can help each other uh, with different programs. And, you know, I, I, in, in the role that I came from in law enforcement, I saw this and how that, uh, you know, kids talk to kids, peers talk to peers, you know? And so if, if, um, if I'm going to talk to my friends, probably, 
before I would talk to my parents and when I was in school. My friends would know everything about me, everything that was going on, whether good, bad, and everything. So if, if one of these guys or girls that we have trained in the sources of strength, if one of their friends comes to them and they're having that bad day, they can help identify that and say, Hey, come, you know, let's, let's sit down and talk and let's kind of, you know, they, they can have a trusted individual they can go to such as myself or one, one of the other teachers at the school that has been identified as a trusted individual or a person. Um, so that's, that's what that source of strength is, but uh, it's in both middle schools, all the high schools. Uh, we have had some of the elementary schools this year, uh, seem very interested to bring it in, down into the elementary school. Uh, unfortunately, with COVID and everybody going virtual, uh, we've not been able to assess that yet. But uh, it's going. Um, you know, we, we have actually virtual classes and virtual learning with sources of strength. So, you know, it's something that's, that's still, uh, still in operation. Um, our first initiative, I guess, for the work group, though, was Strong Minds. Um, that Strong Minds Kentucky uh, that we partnered with our community partners and we, we had that started with, uh, with you guys at the library. You know, it, it was, um, we started out as kind of a stepping stone. You know, if you think about mental health, you know, and how depression and suicidal thoughts and um, substance abuse and then just finalizing it with how can we keep our minds healthy, you know, we, we had it as that same thing. We, we want to look at each work group or this work group. Like I said, you know, the goal is to, you know, kind of empower, educate, um, and inform, uh, and, and kind of take away some of that stigmatism of mental health when you say that and, and take that away of because somebody is being depressed that they be labeled he's depressed so he's he's not a it's he we can't use this person when that's not true and so we try and help take that away but you know we want to educate and we want to have resources and that was the big thing we think out of that strong minds group we wanted an education piece so we would educate the public that we had with those open forums and then we also had a resource side so for each group we had the resources there that we're able to provide different uh, types of um, information, such as recovery centers come in and, and helped or gave offers in, in those things with parents or kids or whoever that was there that were, were uh, battling with substance abuse. So, um, you know, that was one I think with all of us as community partners, we're really proud to get stepped into and get that going. Um, so, uh, those are those are probably we have some other small initiatives that we've kind of tuck along each month. We try and do something different each month uh, is our goal that we have something uh, to bring that awareness or educate um, each month to our public. And that's that's put out by by our community partners. You know, this is not the work group is, you know, we we coordinate it at the health department, but it is it is made up of community partners. It is a community work group. And, and that's why I said, everybody's welcome to get involved with this, um, with different things. You know, it, we don't, we don't just seclude to, well, you don't work at the school, you don't work at the library or you don't work at the police department or wh whatever. Um, you know, we have community members involved with this as well, uh, because that's, that's the people that it affects. That's the people that we want to get inside or, or what are ideas that we can use to help our community. And if you are involved, it's meaningful to you. So I think the inclusivity of the mental health work group is one of the things that really drew me into it. Um, so for those people watching, um, how does one connect with the work group? How does one get involved with them? Um, you can reach out to us at the, at the health department. John Vorbach is actually coordinating uh, the work group now. Uh, and so he is our deputy director. Uh, but, you know, just basically we just need an email. Uh, you may not be able to come or get involved. Right now we're doing all virtual meetings with, with our work group. But, you know, if we have your email, we can send you what's going on each month. So you know, hey, this month the guys – and girls, you know, the group is, uh, for instance, last month, you know, it took us 
it took us uh, several meetings to come up with those printed signs that we did. And everybody kind of agreed with that and how, how we were going to do it and, and everything. But if you're involved with that, you know, it, it's the same thing, getting input. But if you just send us um, uh, an email and say, hey, I want to get involved with the uh, mental health work, work group, it's as easy as adding you into the listserv. And then um, that's that's it. So Bruce, um, why do you think mental health is important, uh, especially maybe right now uh, during COVID-19 in Jesmyn County mental health, I would say? Well, you know, Perry, uh, unless you were considered a central worker and you guys even had to close down the library. Uh, and there's a lot of people that had to stay home and were asked to stay home and self quarantine and not get out and move around so that we could stop that spread. Uh, you know, so that we've got these restrictions going on and what, you know, people, you, and they call it cabin fever. And when you get that cabin fever, you know, you get several things that happen and it starts affecting you mentally. Uh, and and um, several things that we've seen come out of this is mental states change. Uh, you have domestic violence that comes out of this. You have substance abuse issues, alcoholism, um, you know, not just drugs, but alcoholism. And, and you know, one thing that has flourished in this is uh, alcohol sales. You know, uh, we've seen, you know, news, news releases on these things and that. But, you know, the mental health is so important. Uh, you know, one of the things that we did was, basically what are those stresses and how to identify those stresses and how you can do certain little things. We, we, we have an app that we came up with uh, to, to use uh, to help you relieve some of those stresses. So uh, everybody's stressed and everybody's done with COVID. You know, we, we, we had that conversation yesterday. It, uh, everybody's just tired of it. Everybody wants everything to go back to normal, you know. Well, Bruce, is there anything you'd like to add that maybe we didn't discuss about either the um, mental health work group or the health department? No, um, like I said, everybody's invited to uh, to jump on board. It, it's open to the community. You know, this, like I said, the work group was designed uh, through the community from that was an assessment. Uh, and the community said that is a need that we need that we we want is mental health. Uh, and something that, that we need to work on. So, you know, everybody's welcome to it. You just you just need to reach out to us. So. Well, I do have one more question, actually. Are there any specific mental health resources um, offered through the health department that you think would be appropriate right now? Uh, so what we have, if you go to uh, jessmanhealth.org, you can navigate through there. We have several different things uh, that... Uh, through population health that you can look at um, with different things that we have going. Also, you know, our uh, Facebook, uh, our Facebook page, and we're very active with it. We have quite a few follow followers with that. Uh, social media, you know, uh, those, those are our media ways we put out information. Uh, so you can go back and look at, you know, uh, with our social media and see, kind of some of the uh, different flyers that we've put out and, and, uh, and that and see. Thank you so much, Bruce. Thank you for your work and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.